hope you managed to get a sip of water or some other beverage. And so let's keep going with the next track, Frontier Technologies. So for this track, these are the kind of project ideas that we were looking for. Innovative blockchain solutions in frontier fields such as quantum computing and space. So something like space governance, for example, or you know, we're seeing, you know, we'll love to we have love to see some smart implementation of blockchain and quantum software. And you know, other kind of creative integrations and solutions that really explore technologies literally the frontier space, maybe the healthcare, AI, but taking like, you know, 10xing what is happening today. So now time to announce the top three projects and please let's see our runners up. Congratula congratulations to Map Table Atlas and Yao. Great work teams. And now uh, we're going to show you the video and the winner of the Frontier Technologies track. And the uh winner is... So congrats, CryptoSat. Let's invite the team to tell us more about their project. In this um, coming section, I will also be part of the, the panel. So let's welcome them. CryptoSat for winning the Frontier Technologies track. Super excited to have you here today. So today we have Jan and Jonathan, co-founders at CryptoSat, joining us here live, as well as our lead track owner for this Frontier Technologies track, Certic. Monia here is the VP of Marketing at Certic. So welcome all three of you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Gwendolyn. <laughs> yeah. So congrats again. Um, Yana, Jonathan, we do want to, you know, learn more about CryptoSat, what you're doing. Monia here will ask much deeper questions on attack. So let's kick it off, yeah? What is CryptoSat? Uh, so first of all, I wanted to say that we're uh, super excited to um, be the winner of this track and thank uh, uh, whoever uh, helped organize it. Uh, um, and thank uh, Certic for uh, the sponsorship. Uh, thank uh, Dora Hacks uh, for the amazing platform they're providing uh, for uh, those kind of uh, hackathons. Uh, and thanks, uh, thanks to all the um, panel of judges that um, uh, took part in it. Um, so yeah, well, let's let's tell let's talk a bit about uh, what CryptoSat is about. So CryptoSat's mission is essentially provide to provide the most secure uh, form of a route of trust. Uh, which uh, means uh, a trusted environment that can protect sensitive cryptographic operations. Um, and uh, the sensitive cryptographic operations uh, nowadays power a whole uh, financial ecosystems uh, through the blockchain and the crypto technologies. Um, and what we do, we essentially provide um, the ability to execute those sensitive operations with confidentiality and integrity in a completely physically inaccessible environment, which is a space orbit. Uh, we literally um, take a, a computer um, and uh, put it in a satellite, in a small satellite that's very affordable nowadays to launch and operate um, and launch it to a space orbit where nobody can access it, uh, nobody can tamper with how it works, and nobody can shut it down and prevent it from broadcasting. That sounds amazing. I'd like to kick it off here by saying, you know, congratulations. Uh, there's a there's so many questions I don't know where to start right just by talking about that whole concept of a trusted execution environment in space I mean wow uh, you know I've worked with trusted execution environments before I spent a good amount of many years in cybersecurity and I know you know they are available today I think uh, they're available you know both in processors and the cloud right there's a lot of things going on. Um, I'd love to learn a bit more about that. I'd love to understand how you made that leap from what is practical today to deciding what is, you know, the right way forward in creating this environment to be a total separation for trusted execution environments. 
Mm -hmm. uh, perfect. Yeah. So, so I guess um, uh, just to give some background, it would be useful to kind of know Jonathan's background and uh, um, uh, mine. Uh, Jonathan is coming, uh, is bringing an extensive uh, aerospace uh, background. He was actually a co-founder of an NGO that uh, operated and uh, uh, launched the first private uh, spaceship that uh, went to the moon in 2020. Wow. Uh, it was the first time somebody launched a spacecraft that wasn't uh, owned by, by a government. So that, that was amazing. Um, so he's bringing all this expertise in aerospace and I was doing my PhD at Stanford in uh, applied security and cryptography back at the time. And that's where we met. And I was working on uh, what's called trusted execution environments, uh, which is ways to protect um, operations and provide trustworthiness for uh, cryptographic building blocks that have to be executed correctly. Um, there are a couple of exa examples of uh, that uh, that are used in practice nowadays, such as, uh, say, hardware security models that are used uh, vastly in the banking industry and across the industry for uh, specifically cryptographic uh, operations and uh, protection of keys. Uh, there are secure enclaves and trusted execution environments. Uh, the issue with that, and at least based on kind of all the uh, feedback from the community is uh, they're great, they're awesome for in-depth uh, enterprise security, but whenever there's physical access, whenever somebody can actually access uh, those boxes and apply, apply super sophisticated attacks such as uh, side channel attacks, uh, leakage uh, through electromagnetic emanations, there would be community concerns around that. So where we're thinking about projects and where we're looking about something like the blockchain, which is something that uh, is striving not to depend on any party and not to trust anything that's uh, kind of owned centrally or owned by somebody who is economically incentivized, we really need the root of trust. We need something that uh, would uh, operate correctly um, regardless of any uh, incentives to uh, do something malicious. Um, so uh, essentially that's what we're providing this super secure box that will launch into an environment that uh, is completely inaccessible and from the point um, that it's launched and on uh, this environment won't, uh, won't be accessible to anybody even to very kind of uh, powerful adversaries uh, such as uh, nation states it's not technology that's uh, kind of reasonable nowadays um, and in fact, uh, one thing I guess that's worth uh, mentioning that um, we've uh, launched our uh, first uh, crypto satellite, uh, we call it Crypto One, aboard the SpaceX uh, Fal Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, and that was on uh, May 25th, so uh, several days ago, and super excited about uh, this uh, first satellite uh, starting to provide service to our first uh, customers and partners. It's an amazing combination that with both of you having your skills coming together like that, that makes this project you know just come to life in the, the most successful way I, you know you have one side of the fence which is on the aerospace and then you have cryptography on the other one the other side it just it, the marriage there is just uh, the right fit uh for sure and i think uh just to kind of summarize the, the the realization i think here is that this is blockchain and there is a single point of failure which is the, the root of trust right if you compromise that you compromise the entire thing uh, and uh, that's, I think, the driver, right? And what I'm hearing you say is we've come a long way with trusted execution environments being now susceptible to vulnerabilities or compromise. And we all know that. We've seen enough research around that, that you're making this harder statement that there is a stronger requirement now to really up the game around trusted execution environments to the point where you do have to separate you know, that environment into space. But I think that the thing that really resonates the audience here more is the practical cost of that, which is if you roll back 10 years ago, you know, trying to put a satellite in space is quite different and costly compared to now, which I think now satellites and the size of a shoebox, right? They're so small. Uh, and so we've come a long way of reducing the cost uh, that much, you know, down actually getting satellites up is very quick. So I think that's the innovation, which has really brought these things all together. It's the skill sets that you guys have, the realizations of cost, the implications around rooted trust and how now more vulnerable they are in trusted execution environments to now come up with this solution, which really to me is, is an amazing thing. So. Exactly, that's a good point. And uh, um, 
some time ago that uh, that probably wouldn't be possible um and it's possible nowadays due to all the advancement in the space industry uh Jonathan maybe do you want to elaborate about uh, kind of the um um history around uh, CubeSats and uh, how it enables nowadays uh, what we're doing? Yeah, so we are basically writing on two converging technologies that became available in the past uh, decade or so. The first one is the, as you mentioned, the reduction of the launch costs and the reduction of the size of the satellites. So right now you can get them a dime a dozen, more or less. Um, and that, that, drop, that price is even, even falling even so. So uh, you can get the satellites very fairly cheaply and put them in orbit very fairly cheaply, and we are obviously banking on that and taking that to the next level. The other thing that happened in recent years is that not only the satellite side has become commoditized, but also the ground station side. So in the past, if you wanted to communicate with the satellite, you had to install a dish on your backyard or start, you know, um, building an infrastructure to actually communicate with it, and you couldn't get it all the time because the satellite is not overhead all the time. It's actually, uh, it goes around the earth every 90 minutes. So you really have to have a lot of ground infrastructure to do that, but there's been a revolution in that sense that right now you have con uh, constellations uh, uh, of satellites and you can uh, set up uh, a ground station network that you can access via the internet. AWS offers connectivity uh, to ground stations around the world. Azure is also looking into that. So you have a lot of uh, ground infrastructure that is also set in place to communicate with your satellite. So both ends become really uh, uh, revolutionized in recent years. And what we see is that you can actually go on, uh, online and communicate with your satellite. And this is the direction that we're taking this. Um, how small the satellite, by the way, I can share a little bit of picture here. Um, so uh, this, is the, uh, this is the satellite that we are actually launching. You can see it over here. Um, this is about the size of a coffee mug, a little bigger than a coffee yeah, mug. Sure. Yeah, that's about um, right. Yeah. Yeah, all, all, the, all the stuff that we would need to communicate with it. And obviously this is uh, um, uh, going to be available in space very soon. Very cool. So I got one follow-up question here, just in terms of, you know, the practicality side um, of using a trusted execution environment in space as that part only in space, I assume, am I correct? So we're actually computing the things that you need in, in trusted execution environments? Um, is there any delay between ground and, and satellite and having that communication happen remotely? So that, that is a great question. So obviously communicating with a satellite is not something that is the same as communicating with a computer over the internet, right? You cannot SSH to a satellite because it goes around the earth every 10, you know, after 10 minutes you lose uh, communication. So you need to be careful how you do it. And this is why we set up some experiment with the International Space Station that was already in March, where we actually tested a few algorithms and a few protocols uh, to uh, do this kind of joint computation, Earth and space, and kind of show that we can overcome the difficulties, the operational difficulties of, of doing uh, uh, trusted execution environments in space. Um, and obviously, it's very exciting, international space stations overhead, and we could uh, sign your tweets from space to get a proof that your tweet was in space and other applications. Uh, Jan, if you want to elaborate on that. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. So um, um, I, gu I guess uh, where we'll see our first use cases is around applications that uh, um, uh, are sensitive enough to uh, care about taking advantage of uh, such a trustworthy environment and uh, cope with some of the initial constraints. In terms of our roadmap, essentially we're working uh, um, on uh, the next versions that would enable a uh, higher bandwidth lower latency, kind of more availability throughout the day by connecting to more ground stations uh, that have visibility to the satellite uh, throughout the day. And so essentially improving all those aspects and kind of trying to make it as close as possible to the experiments you have um, uh, of connecting to some server in the cloud. Uh, it won't be anywhere there, uh, but where it's still useful is very sensitive things. And uh, some of those protocols uh, can uh, put up with some of those constraints. Uh, and uh, trade them, trade those aspects for uh, better security and uh, trustworthiness. So that's that's where we're aiming uh, at first. So Jan and Jonathan, for this first batch, then you know we talked about use cases, right? Who are the most likely um, potential clients or customers of yours then? 
Um, perfect. That's a great question. Uh, let us give a few examples uh, from what we're already uh, seeing and some of the use cases we're already working on uh, with some uh, partners and uh, customers. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just throw a couple of examples. Uh, think about something like a lottery that's run on smart contracts. Uh, so smart contracts like Ethereum or other platforms, they're essentially this isolated environment that, um, for instance, doesn't have this notion of uh, randomness. Uh, for a lottery, you need to kind of like juggle those uh, balls and you need to come up with some random number and based on that, give uh, somebody some, uh, some money. Um, this, this randomness, it just doesn't exist uh, naturally in the blockchain because it's kind of isolated from the physical world and the physical world is what has randomness. Uh, so what's used for that is oracles, um, services that feed um, this random number into the blockchain. And um, it's uh, sometimes a problem to, to trust those. Like how do you know there is no incentive to kind of craft it maliciously to bias the lottery? Uh, so for instance, one use case is uh, being this trusted party that doesn't have any economic incentives, but it just like work as it should work because uh, you put an algorithm there and you just launch it and nobody can touch it and it keeps working like that. And one of the uh, outcomes of that is producing uh, those random numbers that we can feed into different blockchains like uh, say Ethereum, um, Solana, Velas, whatever, pick uh, some blockchain um, and um, uh, essentially enable those kind of lotteries. Um, another use case is uh, private uh, uh, auctions. Um, uh, so uh, let's say you're, uh, you're using the uh, Binance, the BNB chain, uh, to run a smart contract uh, that uh, uh, enables to bid on something. And uh, you want to provide some privacy for those bids. So you don't want to expose the exact uh, um, uh, bids that the bidders uh, input, and you want to only output kind of the winner. Uh, so that's, uh, that's something that's uh, very easily possible with a trusted party that collects encrypted inputs, uh, does the computation, kind of runs the auction, and then outputs the, the end result uh, without exposing uh, all the transcript uh, of uh, all, the, all the inputs and uh, any sensitive data about the participants. So that's just another example of uh, uh, where a trusted party can be useful for different uh, blockchains. We'd love to ask one more question and then Moni, I think we should look at demo soon, yeah? <laughs> I think so. I'm, I'm excited. I'd love to yeah, me too, me too. But one question for a question on use case first is that, so Jan, you just described, um, you used the example of a lottery, right? But you talked about sensitive um, applications as well earlier. But let's, let's look bigger, right? Because you just have to start of your journey. Like what is like the impact you, both you and Jonathan hope to achieve with CryptoSat? Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess maybe one of the big things we're um, uh, really looking into is, uh, uh, first of all, um, enabling uh, faster adoption of blockchain protocols by creating those, uh, this, this kind of trust uh, that's currently uh, not there and sometimes inhibits uh, the adoption of those protocols for something that needs to be super trustworthy, like more traditional finance, where people are kind of skeptical, they really want to uh, trust and understand what uh, uh, powers uh, their financial system. Uh, so for instance, that can, uh, can be something that can power um, enterprise uh, blockchains uh, and institutional uh, blockchains. Uh, the other thing that we're looking into down the road is potentially um, providing uh, alternatives to proof of work like protocols. Um, and um, uh, just to explain it in, in a nutshell, uh, essentially nowadays um, uh, we have a couple of alternatives uh, to incentivize uh, uh, parties in those protocols to work correctly. Proof of uh, work is one example and it's very energy consuming. Uh, the overall consumption say of the Bitcoin network is comparable to that of a small country. Uh, and then there are proof of stake protocols that uh, have buyers uh, towards the wealthy. And, somebody who just can stake a lot of uh, finances and uh, um, control uh, what's going on. So in order to get rid of that, uh, one, there's, there's all kind of uh, lines of work around that and all kind of alternatives, but one very easy mental model around that is basically have a constellation of uh, trusted parties or trusted validators uh, that just operate correctly and are not biased by any economic incentives. Um, so we're hoping uh, through the, the satellite constellations that we're gonna be uh, launching to enable uh, um, 
those trusted parties that can power uh, such protocols and basically building on top of that to kind of create greener, less energy, uh, more energy efficient uh, blockchains uh, that have less impact on the environment. Um, and, you know, through that, get less pushback from uh, governments or the society in general. So that I think the bigger impact that we can have down the road. Well, you have Elon Musk leading the way, so uh, I don't think you, you have too much yeah. problems. <laughs> yeah, there are many angles to, to those problems, and yeah, we, we need to solve uh, all of them. Great. Well, let's look at demo, demo, right? Demo, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> go for it. Um, okay, so maybe while I'm bringing up the CryptoSat simulator, um, um, uh, Jonathan, can you elaborate uh, maybe a bit about uh, what we, why, why we build the CryptoSat simulator and uh, kind of what's our purpose with it? Yeah, so as uh, Jan uh, bringing up the simulator, we'll just say that, as we mentioned, uh, working with the satellite is very different than working with a computer online. And we wanted to expose developers that might want to develop some use cases around CryptoSat about how is it going to work? How are you communicating with satellite? How, what are the constraints that we have? So one of the things we built is a simulator that shows exactly what is it like to work with CryptoSat. What can you execute in the satellite? How does it work? So you can get start integrating your, your uh, uh, use case with it and seamlessly uh, transition from working with a simulator to working with our satellite. Uh, Jan, take it away. Uh, yeah, so essentially what I'm showing here, uh, we have this, um, uh, fronted, which is uh, both an interactive tutorial, like you can go through different examples of the API, uh, and it's also a simulation of how the satellite uh, um, um, flies in the orbit, uh, which uh, uh, ground station it uh, it's connected to at any moment, um, and then a playground, the sandbox uh, playground that showcases the API. So, for instance, what I'll do now, I'll create a simple request. I'll ask. Uh, my crypto satellite to sign a simple message. And I'm just putting hello here, but equally it can be something like um, a financial transaction. We can actually decide, sign saying some uh, um, transaction um, that can later be put on the bounce blockchain uh, or uh, the Binance uh, chain or a Bitcoin transaction that we can uh, post later. So I'll check the status of my transaction because sometimes the satellite uh, can uh, um, might not be available if it's out of reach of any of the ground stations, but uh, luckily I signed it uh, when it was uh, uh, accessible and uh, I'll uh, show the result. Um, so we have a timestamp here and we have um, this uh, array that contains a digital signature over my message. Uh, so that's just a super simple, that's like really the most basic example of uh, the functionality of such satellites. And uh, in the tutorial, we have uh, um, uh, several more examples, but it just showcases this capability to sign things in a trusted environment. So the private key that is used to sign this uh, piece of data is um, completely protected. It's only in the satellite, it never leaves this, uh, uh, the satellite and nobody can forge this transaction. And by knowing the public key of a satellite, and we can go deeper into kind of how we make this public key available to the community and how we can verify those transactions. Essentially, by having this public key, you can verify that some piece of data has been attested, has been verified and uh, attested by a crypto satellite that you trust. And that's that nobody can tamper with physically. So um, it's a nice onboarding tool and the hope is that developers uh, could use it and even contribute uh, pull requests, contribute code to kind of introduce uh, new use cases that they're thinking about, about for uh, crypto satellites. So that's, that's the tool and we wanted to show that. This is very cool. I, I think it uh, uh, brings up a question I have in terms of availability. So, I mean, I expect there'll be lots of satellites up there, but I'd also expect there's probably going to be some reliability mesh networking where your satellite is going to be the next available or next in, in range satellite or online satellite. Is that something you guys are looking at for the future where you can make um, that? Easy? Perfect. That's a, that's a great question. Yontan, maybe you want to elaborate on it? Um, so yeah, so right now, if you scroll to the right there, Jan, uh, you can see the satellite is, out of, is over the uh, Atlantic Ocean, so there's no uh, communication uh, with it uh, right now, so this is why it's showing up in red. 
And one of the ways we can go around this is obviously spread more ground stations. This is where we get more coverage, but obviously over the ocean, it's hard to have ground stations. And for that reason, we are looking into having a network of satellites, not just one satellite. And you just need, you don't need a lot of them in order to uh, have almost full coverage uh, so that, such that you have at least one satellite over uh, a ground station in a given moment. And this is something that we're ramping up to support. Excellent, that's great to hear. All right, Moni, any kind of last question? I'm, I'm just amazed. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff um, just coming at it differently as well. Uh, Frontier was all about doing it different and, and uh, we, we set the bar high and uh, we talked about innovations where almost reaching the sky, you know, the sky, the stars, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and you guys knocked it out of the park. I mean, I, this is really, you know, from the, the, the realization of where we are in today's technology and the implications of security that we have today around that, that technology, you've understood that well. And bringing the fact that you have two minds together, both like a, a marriage made in heaven, both on the satellite side or the space side and also the crypto side, just makes us even more amazing. So, you know, congratulations and uh, well done is my final word. Thanks. Congratulations, Thank Yana, Jonathan. Thank Great you. job. And so Moni and Setek are very proud to be the lead track owners for the Frontier Tech Technology, uh, Frontier Tech track. So thank you again, Jan and Jonathan from CryptoSet, and we'll see you again.